Welcome to Nancy. Welcome to everyone who attended. And I'll turn it over to Parker. Mike, thanks so much for the introduction. Um, you know, TD Bank continues to uh, really be happy to be able to sponsor the Next Gen Leader Program. Uh, it's a great program. Um, you know, if anyone hasn't attended these webinars before, uh, they're phenomenal. They do a great job. Uh, we've actually had uh, Ivan and Peggy before doing uh, other presentations, which have all been phenomenal. So I'm really looking forward to uh, today's presentation. Um, TD Bank is just happy to be involved in, and be able to continue to support this and all the great programs that the Merrimack Valley Chamber uh, puts on. So thank you so much. And uh, I'll turn it over to Ivan and Peggy. Awesome. Thanks, Parker. Appreciate that. Hey, well, welcome, everybody. Ivan here with Merrimack Digital. Uh, again, just thanks a lot for everyone that's uh, come and uh, joined us today. I really appreciate that, Michael. Thanks for putting this on, and uh, Parker as well. Um, I invited Peggy. Um, Peggy is our leader at Merrimack Digital in terms of all things target marketing. So she is the, the person that we all go to whenever we have any kind of questions. So I invited her to come and do the presentation, and I'll let her take over from here, and then we'll get going. Thank you. Well, you guys, I love doing these types of educational series. I'm going to be covering everything to do with like paid advertising. I promise I will make it super fun for you guys because there's a lot to cover. But really in our marketing world today, I'm going to talk about the behavior of people a little bit more in depth, like us as consumers and how we get fed information and what we take to, you know, the things that spark our interest to learn more. And I'm going to start with this. The behavior of people today is completely different. So when you think about marketing, you have to think about the different channels, the different opportunities to be placed out there to get your content, your brand, your messaging in front of those people. So it's not just about the website, even though that's your home base. It's not just about social. Sometimes you got to think outside the box a little bit. And with any business today, you have, to, you have to spend a little money on marketing. That's just how it has to be. And that's just how it is. And the reason for that is the expansion of all the, especially in your market, uh, in, right? So especially in this area, we want to make sure that your content is being seen by the right people. So the, in the end, the whole concept with marketing is getting your, your, the visuals, the content, the messaging in front of the right people to then take action. Simple enough. So I'm going to kind of walk through some of our different um, marketing campaign options and opportunities and just make sure that you guys are educated on what's available to you. Because a lot of the things I'm going to cover, it's like you don't know what you don't know, right? And so I want to make sure that you're educated on what those options are. The whole purpose, again, of target marketing and target marketing is many different facets. So one being Google, okay? We know for Google, being granddaddy of all search engines, that it's important to play that game in the sense of getting paid to be seen. So last seminar um, that we did was about, you know, just SEO, search engine optimization, making sure your Google My Business page was um, successfully set up, making sure your website was optimized to make Google happy. But there's other things that Google likes to, you know, in the sense of making sure businesses are being seen out there. So. That is something I'll dive into in just a second. The other um, area of focus with target marketing is physical lo location. So we're seeing a lot more interest in this thing called mobile geofencing. And what that is, is literally fencing businesses to capture people's mobile IDs to then serve ads to them. We, as consumers, are served ads every single day. We all know what, we're talk what I'm talking about, right? So if you're on social or if you're on a website, you're like, how do they know I look, looked at those shoes? Or how do they know I was just talking about Key West and now I'm getting served Key West ads? We, we can all relate to this. So there's a rhyme and reason for that. I'm going to explain to you what that looks like. And I, I'm talking about the behavior right now. <clears throat> Article reads, social likes, everything's tracked. So I know it's like a little bit brotherish, but it's the truth. So your behavior <clears throat> online with where you go, where you search, how you search is all tracked. And that is how the opportunity of you as a business owner um, can take a, a little bit of advantage of that, right? To make sure that my audience, my people, I want them to see my content. I want, to see my, I want them to see my services and products. And I want to get out there more with my brand. That is possible with marketing. So... Diving back into Google, Google search engine marketing. Search engine marketing essentially is getting paid to be on top. What's different today with Google, you guys, 
is that Google wants to work with local businesses. So if they see that you as a local business are running ads, okay, and then you're, you know, maybe there's a little bit bigger of a business also running ads, they're going to take a little more advantage in helping you as a local business get seen first. So it doesn't take a lot on Google to get on top of page one. But for those of you that are doing a good job with keeping up to date with your Google My Business page and you're doing what you need to do for your search engine mark or search engine optimization, the things that Google likes, this is a good way of getting paying based off keywords and by geo to make sure that your information is always top of Google. So if you're one of those businesses like I want to be on top of Google all the time, you're going to have to pay for that. Um, however, just remember, you know, a little goes a long way now, okay? And just remember that Google wants to help us as small business to medium-sized business to any local business. So that's the positive, okay? So this is one of the things we can help with. Hey, Peggy, hold yep. on one second on this slide. And just to kind of give everybody some numbers to think about, because I think a lot of the times <clears> when we talk to advertisers or businesses and just kind of walking them through how these results kind of play out, just a couple of stats to think about and these GMB listing one paid spot free free spots in this uh the map section right here when people do searches 47 percent of those clicks on search results come up happening in these three results right here with the maps the other in the next 37 percent are the top three ads up here so in yeah. those two spots alone the one two three four five six seven the first seven spots on these results Google tells us that 84 percent of clicks happen so yeah. again, to, to Peggy's point, I think it's really one of those things where we talked about in the previous one, getting your foundation in order to help this map results come up organically. And then, you know, a little bit of advertising on the pay-per-click for your type of business or service or whatever it may be goes a long way because what happens on these free organic results down here on the bottom, a lot of the times you'll start to see a lot of these aggregators and those aggregators are going to be like Yelp um, because they have millions of pages within their site that kind of dominate that. But to Peggy's point, Google is doing everything they can to give the local spots to these map results to local businesses in the area that the user is actually searching for. So very important to kind of, you know, have a strategy to figure out how you're going to come up in one of these first top seven spots. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and again, we have a way to estimate for all of you. The nice thing with, with search engine marketing is if this is something of interest, we're able to actually provide estimates. So based off of budgets in location and what keywords you want to be kind of searched upon and be found under, we're able to give you guys some really good numbers as far as what that looks like. So everything is tracked, everything's measured and everything can be kind of essentially quoted out. So you understand like, if you're interested in something like this, what does that look like to me and my business? What am I going to get out of this? So we do a lot of estimates to helping our businesses understand like, is this a good product for me? And is this going to be viable in the end? So just remember that you guys, we can always run estimates for you guys if you're interested in running any type of campaign. But I'm a big fan of um, search engine marketing. We have um, our team that runs these campaigns for Google partner, that's important for you to know, Google certified, and we play by Google's rules because we have to, they grade us just so you know, I know it's like school. So that everything we do, we have to do within Google's um, guidelines because they grade us on our performance and how we run our campaigns, which is really important for us. And I need you guys to know that because, you know, we are the legit real deal in the sense of the partnership that we have with Google. Um, so this is just an example of one of our recent um, campaigns. So we had from a campaign that we ran recently, 109 potential inbound prospects and so out of essentially running an average cost window of $421 we were per month, we were able to get a substantial amount of return on investment. So, you know, what we can do when we're estimating these out for you guys is give you impression count, screen time, um, and how many clicks, average clicks you're going to get. And then, of course, we're going to lead a lot of people to your website, but that's the foundational piece that Ivan keeps talking about. Your website better be set up for success. And the biggest thing, too, is making sure we lead people to a page of your website, maybe a landing page that resonates with them so they don't have to search. <coughs> All right, <clears throat> moving on to a little search. Hang on, you guys. <coughs> Woo. 
sorry about that. I have like the worst tickle. It's called sinus season. <laughs> so I, I apologize. But moving on to search inside retargeting, this is one of my favorite campaign options. <laughs> and so what we have here is based off of somebody's search, when you do a search online, not only are you able to serve ads through Google, but you can also serve ads through a multitude of different websites out there. So if you ever are kind of browsing the web and you notice those ads are following you based off of your search criteria, that's called search retargeting. And search retargeting is something we do a lot of. And so you got to think of it two ways. There's Google search. Okay. I want, I need, I want to take action now. That's usually Google. And then there's, for a lot of us, we do our random searches, kind of searching for products or services, but then we might get distracted because that's our behavior, right? Not ready to commit yet, but I'm searching on a certain, like maybe a landscaper or something, an insurance or whatever that might be. And then I'm leaving, I'm going to my websites I like to go to, for example, weather.com or one of my fitness websites. And then here comes a related ad based off of my search criteria. That is search retargeting. And so it, it's all about staying top of mind because you got to be at the right place at the right time to say like, uh, eventually I keep seeing these bath fitter ads because I was looking at bathroom remodeling. That's what it's about. Search keywords to help ads get served to your people based off of what their behavior is. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And then site retargeting is a pixel that we place on your website. Someone comes to your site they leave your site and then they are served ads. And so we are all served ads every day for a rhyme or reason. And a lot of it's due to your search criteria, right, Ivan? Yep. And I think one of the things to, to, to keep in mind too on the search retargeting <laughs> is, um, and I think some people kind of get it confused with the uh, site retargeting when we place that pixel. The search retargeting, it's basically just doing searches and you don't know, you're not even clicking on any ads. I mean, you're not clicking on any ads and you start reading articles, whatever the case may be. But the fact that you typed in any specific particular keyword, like in this example, bathtub repair, um, I have a real life example on this regard. So I just recently, you know, purchased a new instrument for my daughter. She plays a bunch of instruments. The instrument that I purchased for her, I mean, I'd looked at it maybe three, four weeks ago, but constantly on my Facebook feed, constantly on sites that I'm reading, uh, any kind of ad unit, you know, I keep seeing the same uh, retailer, online retailer that I purchased it from consistently just kept hitting me and it kept hitting me with the exact instrument that I yeah. looked at three weeks ago. It was just constantly in front of me. And then yesterday or two days ago over the weekend, I finally pulled the trigger and it should arrive today. So in, in that example, the retailers constantly putting those retargeted ads in front of people knowing that, Hey, if I haven't looked at this instrument or they don't know it's Ivan at the time, they just know that my browser looked at this instrument. Hey, maybe if we keep serving it up eventually that browser is going to convert and I did convert. So that's generally how that would work on the site and search retargeting. Right, right. And a lot of you um, might not have, you know, you might go to websites many times and get served ads afterwards. It depends on the page you've gone to. It depends on maybe um, a section of the site that you're engaged with. But we do a lot of search and site, you guys, retargeting for clients, and they love it because hey, it's it Yep. Yeah. Oh, pull up. Oh. Ryan, did you have a question? Okay. Okay. So my favorite, my favorite campaign type tactic, mobile geofencing. So we know a lot about the things you like, right? So based on where you go, um, we can actually fence locations, conventions, all right, addresses and address like neighborhoods. And it's all about capturing the right people at the right place to then serve ads to those people. That is mobile geofencing. So you might notice some of you going into a store, leaving the store, and then all of a sudden, as you're browsing the web, you are served ads. So that is mobile geofencing. We all get that. This is really, really effective, you guys, because we are seeing a lot more now that we're opening back up one of the things we're seeing more of is conventions, right? So like for an example, I'm doing a couple of like down south golf tournaments, right? Catered to high end um, luxury condo real estate, you know? And so they're, you know, it's really thinking about where are my people? And it could be retail, it could be a neighborhood. So service industries, you guys, 
we do a lot of addressable geofencing where we're hitting maybe some of the older neighborhoods that might be in the need soon of new HVACs, right? Air conditioners, roofs. So think of it that way. Um, and of course, just general business that could mean anything, right? So um, we are right now, a good example is car washes. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a big car wash out east where we are fencing um, their locations themselves. There's multiple locations. And so we have a fence at every like location to serve them ads about signing up for a membership. Okay, because those, those are their customers. We want them to know about the membership. But then we're also serving and fencing uh, places of just where people are close to the faci facility of the car wash. And then we're fencing just general people and talking about the car wash that has just opened or that there's you know multiple car washes in the area. That's just one of many, many examples. But wanted to kind of share that with you guys just because fencing does help to stop you know, when you think about staying top of mind, this is another way of getting your ads, your information in front of the right people based off of their location. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're fenced all the time. There are some restrictions of places, like you can't do like some hospitals, obviously, um, you know, like middle school, like schools, COPA. So there are guidelines that we have to follow. Um, but these are the things that, like I said, we want, make, we want to make sure you're aware of what's available to you with, when it comes to marketing opportunities, because there's a lot of really cool things out there that you can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Here's the other fun thing about mobile geofencing is your competition. <laughs> so if, for example, you're a car dealership and you want to fence your competitors, that's just one example. My car wash um, example. Yes, we're, of course, we're, we're fencing other car washes. Um, to bring awareness that, hey, you know, you might want to use our car, car wash. So competition is something that we can geofence. And depending on you as a business, it, you know, it's something to kind of think through and realize um, I'm helping a, a big Harley Davidson dealer out east and not east, sorry, out west. And so same thing, we're kind of geofencing other uh, power sports dealerships because they're looking to buy used bikes. Um, with inventory being so low right now with Harley Davidson. And so that's just one way to getting their ads in front of the right people based because they, they have a specific need, they need to use bikes. And so they're doing it the right way and fencing areas with their other um, enthusiasts of the power sports industry, the biker industry is out there. You know, another thing, yeah, another thing on this too, one of the things that is really even cooler to me about the geofencing is that once an ad is served, to a mobile device, that mobile ID on your mobile device that's unique to your device is captured. And yeah. then what happens is that, it, uh, we'll go stay on that side real quick, uh, oh, on, yeah. that, on that fear side. And if you notice right here on the far right uh, uh, mobile phone right below it, once I capture that mobile ID, then what happens invariably is that we all go home, right? We may be out and about, we see an ad, all of us go home. And then once we go home, our phones are being, you know, we connect to our home Wi-Fi. Once we're connected to that home Wi-Fi, the next thing that happens is that now I know, okay, well, mobile ID, Ivan, don't know it's Ivan, but it's a mobile ID, served up an ad, Ivan goes home, I click onto my Wi-Fi, oh, look at all these other devices on that Wi-Fi. So at that point, we're able to cross-target more ads to my desktop, to my, um, my over-the-top TV if I'm watching YouTube TV, um, on Facebook if I'm doing other things that are part of, you know, whatever I'm doing on my laptop. So we're able to just kind of start to kind of say, hey, we're not only going to hit people on their device that's mobile, but we're also going to hit it on all the other devices once they go home. And at that point, you're start, you're start to see that evolution of what Peggy said earlier. It's like, why are these ads just following me everywhere? They're just on my phone. They're on my desktop. They're on my laptop. And again, the whole purpose of that stuff is just really to retarget and hopefully make those people convert because, I mean, all of us don't really convert the first time we do something. It takes a few, you know, more times to see something before we make that conversion happen. Right. Mm -hmm. What do they say? Like 10, ten. usually seven, seven ten. Ten attempts or a visual, like that visual type of mind to, to get action sometimes, depend, again, depending on the product and service. Yeah. Um, but I think we can all relate to that as well because every once in a while there's that one ad that just captures your attention to take action, right? And that's really what we're trying to do. That's what you want to do as a business is always stay top of mind. And just, because we as a behavior of, of people today, we're literally cling to our phone, right? Our phone's like a limb of our body. If it was gone, we would literally probably die. <laughs> just to be honest. 
And then we're always online. We're always on our laptops. We are very connected as individuals, right? Um, including our smartphone, our smart TVs, connected TV is a big thing as well. So there's always a rhyme and reason of why you're seeing the things that you see and kind of make, maybe start paying attention to what you're seeing. And you'll say to yourself like, oh yeah, I just searched on that product or service or yeah, I was just at that store or, you know, maybe here you go, Siri and Alexa. Oh boy, are they listening to you, right? So just by you talking and throwing out, they'll listen to certain keywords and if there's an ad available in your area based off what you are saying, it's going to serve you an ad. It's crazy. A lot of people are like, that's so weird, such big brotherish, but unfortunately, you know, it's, it's just, it's just how, it, how things are today. It's just our world. Um, customer data is another, like I said, the data of your customer base. I hope all of you know who your audience is. I'm sure you do. And maybe even have your own customer database, you know, emails, addresses, things like that. So a lot of businesses aren't sure what to do with that information. And the custom audience of what you have in place from years of collection, right? And inquiring and getting the right information from your customers can be reused to get your brand continuously out there. So email or addresses can be reused in different, different areas instead of just traditional marketing. So an email can be reused on social and we can do lookalikes, which I'll explain in a second. Or addresses can be used for addressable geofencing to get maybe a new service or a product out there because this is the address list that you have that you wanna serve ads to. So unlocking essentially the value of your customer data is a big thing as well. And I think it's underutilized for businesses that say I have this and I send out maybe a newsletter, but what else can I do with my customer data? There's a lot you can do with it, okay? So utilizing with web, social, email marketing, lookalike lists, there's a lot of opportunity out there. It's just figuring out, talking to Ivan or I about what those opportunities are. But if you have a customer list, ask yourself, what are you doing with it now? Are you doing anything with it? Because we can help you utilize it. And those are your best customers. Those are the people that know you and that have given you their information and saying, I'm okay with you using my information. Yes, I want to receive information about what's going on in your business. If you're not doing that, this opportunity, we want to help you get there again. Here's a great example, Peggy, too. Uh, we're talking, I'm talking to a, a company right now that sends out 1.1 million pieces of direct mail per month. They actually purchase that list of addresses from Experian because Experian sells data and whatnot. So in that example, they only do direct mail right now at this time. And we're actually talking about, you know, taking that list of addresses that they've already procured that they know they want to mail a direct mail piece to, and they do so. We can take that list at the address level and put it into the platform. It's the programmatic platform that we use. And then we can start to geofence just those households at the household level across those 1.1 million. So now this part, this particular business is sending out the mail piece at the letter and they're able to deal target with a mobile ad or any kind of ad or at the, at the household level. And then from there, once people click on an ad, go to their site, we can start doing the retargeting that we talked about to do the retargeting to get them. So now you're taking that list and giving it just this extra level of, you know, ability to be able to kind of leverage, you know, and try to bring down his cost right now, because his cost per acquisition is pretty high. And the goal is to drop down that cost per acquisition from them. And the way to do that is to start to buy other media that doesn't cost as much as direct mail but it gives you the same kind of leverage in terms of being able to target those households. So that's just another example of how you can use data to really kind of just start to power up your marketing. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Ivan. And this is just a diagram of like what we do a lot with email lists today. I don't, so with Facebook, if you're boosting, you guys know what boosting is, right? Boost, boost, um, being seen. So boosting is a one and done where obviously you boost to get your post seen by your audience in their newsfeed. So one of the really cool things with Facebook is all these little custom audience options. And one of it is, if you have an email list, we can literally upload the email list as a custom audience and it's called a lookalike. So what happens there is if your email list has other people in the, your geo with similarities of a profile for Facebook, those people could potentially be served an ad. A good example is actually me. When I'm not doing digital marketing, I'm a fitness instructor. So if someone was, if 
a local gym was to upload my email or a list of emails, and I'm in that list, I could potentially then be served, right, one of their ads because I my profile matches or my, you know, my, with my friends in my, my community of people within my social world, there's a lot of people that also love fitness and health and all that stuff. So those people potentially would also receive those ads on social because they're similar to my profile. Mm -hmm. And so that essentially is what lookalikes are. And there's custom audience builds too. Facebook is amazing for that. They track everything, what you like, you know, Interest. I mean, it's really become very granular with the types of people that you can get in front of. So if you're running boosting now, you have some of those options. If you haven't tried Facebook marketing, where we run like an actual campaign for you on Facebook, because you got to keep consistently posting on Facebook and, and Instagram. And of course, you got to boost to be seen. But with Facebook today and their algorithms, you also have to start thinking about running consistent campaigns on a monthly basis. Those are, aside from what you're doing, consistently getting your a certain product or service or your brand in front of the right people. Because with marketing today, those custom audience or lookalikes are pretty cool and they're pretty specific with who you want to see your content. So social, Instagram, Facebook, definitely think about that, you guys as far as an option for marketing. And um, I'll be honest with you, it's a low cost. It's a much easier, lower cost to run on Facebook and Instagram. Doing then some, you know, all these tactics are, I think are really reasonable, but depending on your budget, you have options. It's figuring out, letting Ivan or I help you figure out what is the best marketing option for you as a business. So, so you don't have wasted dollars because some of these don't really apply to maybe some of you, some do. It's just figuring out what that mix is and what that looks like to you guys. Video, I've always stressed about video, how important video is. I hope just generally you guys are putting out some great video clips, going Facebook Live maybe every once in a while, but video on social media delivers, like it, it does, superior results. So when we're running our Facebook ads or we're doing a custom audience or we're doing lookalike, I really, really push for the client to give us a solid, like some sort of awesome video. If they don't, we can help with them create a video, but video always gets 50%, if not higher click-through rates and activity overall, because that's just what people like to see. Movement is everything. And it's come a long way. You don't have to do this like commercial grade video. It's so much easier to do videos today, but if we're running a campaign, we definitely want to get a little movement in there carousel ad video, just because it just makes better impact. A lot more activity, a lot more. Um, another little diagram, leverage the power of video to drive more sales traffic and awareness. I think we can all agree on this. So when we're funneling through our newsfeed, what stops you in your tracks? It's probably something with movement, uh, most likely, or really great visual. So yeah, that's something you might have to invest in, into. It's making sure you have great content and the content includes a lot of times the visuals that you put out there. So we actually have, it's one of our programs here. Um, it's called the Video 360. It's like multi-video marketing. And so a lot of what we do with our clients is again, getting them seen in multiple platforms because this is our behavior today. So, you know, there will be times that we're running campaigns and, you know, focus on different goals, depending on, you know, the client's needs, right? So one could be running um, a video campaign on social, and that's just one part of the campaign. And then we're also running that video on connected TV, right? Getting it in a specific geo, making sure people are seeing that video and that branding and the information about the business on smart TVs. And then there's, of course, like YouTube and Google. Google and YouTube is dynamic, okay? So here we go again, going back to, of course, granddaddy of them all, Google, and maybe doing a little YouTube, you know, campaigning. So the cross-platform video marketing is so effective when it comes to really getting your branding out there. If you have a really good video to get it seen by thousands and thousands and thousands of people on a monthly basis. These are all things we can give you estimates on. These are all things that are viable to your business. It just kind of depending, like I said, on you know what your budget is, what you feel comfortable with, but we do everything from 
one platform, like again, just social video marketing to two platforms, maybe it's social and YouTube up to, you know, multiple platforms, whatever your comfort zone, essentially it's just a broader reach, getting it seen in multiple facets, because that's what our behavior is today. Any questions on that or, or Ivan, any comments? Mm -hmm. That's good right there. I guess before, does anyone have any questions? Just so we can pause for a quick second, just to make sure. Uh, is there any questions? If you do, just go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll make sure we monitor that and, and make sure we answer those before we're done. So feel, don't be shy and I'm sure people have some questions. Connected TV is a big, has become, I'm gonna just stop and kind of talk about connected TV a little bit. So, you know, back in the day, commercials used to be very, 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 very expensive. So connected TV, I think is a, a nice affordable way to kind of get a commercial or a nice video about your business out there into, you know, again, multiple channels. You're talking like Hulu, um, Apple, all those, all those smart TV channels that are available to us. You can get your commercial seen, right? Um, we're seeing 85% of connected TV families are multi-screeners. And so that's why you know, the multi, multi, multi layer of video is so important to businesses today. And um, a, one of my examples is we're helping um, a development company in Texas. And so they want, they're on Connected TV, we're doing a YouTube and social video for them. And it's definitely, we can see the ROI on that just because we can see through Google Analytics what type of traffic's coming to their website. But here's what's really kind of cool about um, this whole mobile geofencing it's conversions that can be tracked. And so we can see by, cause everything's tracked by your mobile ID. Like if I go into, if I get, if I'm in a, let's say a restaurant or I'm in a development area and I get served an ad and I leave and then I go to the place where, um, you know, the development center where the campaign is actually being run from, okay? I can potentially be served then another ad, but also that's a conversion. So the place of the business is where the conversions happen. So we can see it's called foot attribution. We can see depending on your business, people getting served ads, but then coming back to your business as a conversion. And that's pretty cool that that's available. So it's not just serving ads. It's not just getting clicks. You know, we can track conversions with some of this stuff as well, which is pretty, pretty substantial. We have a, an example on that, guys. Um, we ran a campaign for a cannabis retailer and the cannabis retailer was targeting their other dispensaries, the competitor dispensaries. They ran a two month campaign and they were able to kind of see that not only did we serve the ads up to the mobile IDs that were going into the competitor locations, but at the end of the 60 days, we were able to do a foot traffic report and see that 388 of the devices that were going to other competitors actually came in into the retail location for the campaign that we ran for the dispensary. So you can see those attributions. And I think at that, at that example, I mean, the average cost of, that someone spends at the dispensary is about $131. So for the cost of the campaign, the ROI was just like pretty much there. Yeah, it, it just kind of speaks for itself. But being able to track that foot traffic report and to be able to see that, hey, these devices are actually coming in to the actual location what really matters. Yeah. That's really exciting for the clients to see. We're, uh, so the other piece of, you could say something you might hear more of is audio marketing. So that's, you know, radio to video. Don't worry, we're not radio though, but doing more things on Pandora, doing more things on Spotify, um, iHeartRadio. So we're seeing a lot more um, businesses also making more interest, not just with video, but also voice and turning their like videos into more voiceovers to be used on other platforms such as audio. So there's something to be said about, you know, having a commercial out there on some of these audio marketing platforms such as like the Pandora's and, and Spotify's and iHeartRadio and Apple, you know, podcasts and all that, and all the things that go, that are available to us today. But there's a lot of opportunity with um, audio marketing in, in like in, our marketing kind of genre of options today, and it's becoming more popular. So I won't go into too much detail because I've just thrown a lot your way, but that is an option of doing just audio marketing and just serving like commercial grade ads and voiceovers to certain um, platforms based off of age, 
geo behavior, types of music people like to hear or types of podcasts. So I like the audio platforms because it's gotten a lot granular with like, again, getting your content seen and heard by the right audience because everything's tracked. And so that's what I love about target marketing. It's I can really define who gets to see or hear my information. And it's usually the right people. Otherwise it's wasted dollars. Okay. Like sometimes those billboards, it's, everyone's crossing those, those billboards. Right. Um, but with marketing, we can, we can get really granular with who sees our stuff, which is, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So a little, little takeaway section, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. I really want questions from you guys. What's so top 10, 10 takeaways website open and ready for business. So talked about that before foundational pieces need to be ready. Make sure your site's optimized. Maybe it's mobile friendly. Um, make sure you have Google analytics set up. A lot of people don't know what type of traffic's coming to your site, which always surprises me. So if you haven't looked at your site traffic lately, please do so. If you need help with how to read your traffic, call out to us. We are happy to help you. Um, making sure my Google My Business is always intact. Google is a living thing, I swear to God. It's really true. <laughs> Everything you do with Google is tracked, checked, and they pay attention. So they like those businesses that actually are spending some energy and time and effort and a little money. And those are the businesses that always rank higher in search results based off of a multitude of different keywords by location because they're putting a little effort into their pages. Um, reviews, always ask for reviews, respond to those reviews, tell your story, you know, that's everything on social. Um, and so I talked about marketing on social, you got to pay to play. That is never going to go away, um, unfortunately. And then even if you're boosting and you think that's enough, it might not be, you might have missed opportunity. Again, it's all about missed opportunity of getting your information seen. So think about running a campaign every once in a while to get more leverage off of social. Uh, let's support our fellow businesses. I'm a big supporter of the C Chamber. So you, one thing I always have expressed with when doing these for other chamber groups is like you guys should be working together. If there's a um, businesses that have a good synergy with each other or similar products or that you can help each other out, that's like the best marketing you could do for each other. So promoting each other, giving highlights, mentioning in posts and things like that. That's everything in my opinion. Um, we talked about the data, data drive, you know, marketing. Those are like, what are you doing with your data list today? Your email list, your address list, customer list. Is it just there and you're not doing anything with it? Because if, if that's the case, let's talk, okay? Don't let that just hang out there. Mobile geofencing, big fan, love, 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 okay? Really cool ways that we can get content in front of the right people by the place that we fence. Um, Multi-screeners, we talked about that, right? So again, we are multi-screeners. I think all of us can relate. At the end of the day, we might be in front of our smart TV watching something while we have our phone. And it's sad enough to say, I'm one of those people, and maybe even having our laptop. So it's like phone, laptop, TV on, oh my gosh. So, but... If I see something I like, I have my devices right there that I can start digging in and doing some, some research because this is who we are. And then lastly is start thinking in the back of your head. You know, there is that thing called audio marketing and that's, that's coming in, you know, that's becoming pretty popular nowadays just because of the audience selection. And I'm so sorry, I, I was like, had a sinus attack earlier. So hopefully that wasn't too much a distraction. Welcome to our spring weather. Um, but I really appreciate your time. And I'm going to open it up now for questions for Ivan and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real quick before the Q&A, everybody. I know we got about 12 more minutes. If anyone that's <laughs> participating, if you're interested in having us just do a complimentary website audit, what we'll do is we'll have we'll have some tools that will go into the site and not onto your site, but we can actually look at the site structure and look at the full audit of your site to make sure that the SEO is accurate, it's performing well, and more importantly, that Google finds it that it's performing well, the things that we do. Because at the end of the day, like we tell people, it doesn't really matter how the site looks to me or you or anybody. It's really what Google thinks about it. And we're able to kind of give you those things. So complimentary audit, no strings attached. Just let me know. All I need is a email with your website and give me a couple of days and then I'll get that over to you so you can take a look at it. But with that said, 
we will open it up for some questions. Any questions? I know we kind of threw a lot at you, but um, yeah, any questions? I'd love to hear some. Anyone yeah. has any questions, you can just ask them uh, out directly or you can type them in yeah. the uh, message box there. Sure, I've, I've, I've got one, perhaps. <laughs> um, and Ken, Ken, for you real quick, I just saw the announcement yesterday and the email that went out. So congrats on the new clothing line, awesome. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so my, my question is, uh, I've talked to a couple of digital marketers, like I'm sure everybody else gets it. Like once you post that you're like a founder or CEO or whatever on LinkedIn, um, every digital marketer on, on LinkedIn is, is um, knocking on your door. So I talked to a, a couple and I guess my question is just around price. And I know like the answer is, is going to be, it depends because there's uh, like a, a lot of different stuff that you can do. And I'm sure, you know, you can spend as much as, as yeah. you want to, but do you have a sense in terms of like, I don't know how to word it, but basically like if I were interested in doing like a starter package, um, kind of like, kind of like the basics, um, like what, what, the, what a budget for that would look like. Cause I remember when I talked to some of the digital marketers, uh, they, they threw out like, you know, $5,000 a month and we'll cover your, your, um, digital marketing and, and SEO, you know, and obviously for like a new, a brand new company, that's essentially pre-revenue, um, 5k a month is, is a bit steep. So, um, yeah, I guess that's my question. I'll pause there and <laughs> see if you have any reactions to that. Uh, Peggy, me, we, like, either one of us could take it, but just to kind of, I'll start off. I think yeah. one of the things that, you know, it's always great to get to that point once you actually know what's working and what's not working. So what we tell people generally is we have packages that start as, you know, under a thousand dollars a month. And what I kind of, what I try to tell people is the smaller packages that you do when you first start, they should be designed more to figure out what message is resonating best, what pro in your instance, what products are selling best. So you can kind of get an understanding of, okay, if I spend 700 bucks, what am I getting for that? I want to make sure that I get data back so I can make better decisions moving forward. Going in at 5,000, it's kind of like you're, you're putting the cart before the horse. You're making it seem like I already know what I'm targeting. Like right now, I mean, looking at your site, I did take a look at it. And I mean, just ironically, when the email came out, you have four or five products right now, right? So there's not a lot of products that you have out there yet. I'm sure you're developing other products. So the thing that I would probably focus more is like, is my site designed to convert properly, which it is, you got a nice little e-com site going. Now, can I target specific areas? And in your instance, can I, you know, maybe geofencing retail locations of similar types of products that you're selling. So you can kind of get in front of those individuals and let them know that you exist, right? And I think it's really, you know, it is dependent on, you know, you can spend all the money in the world you know, to do that. But at the end of the day, I think it's starting off slower. Your SEO, we have packages for SEO just to kind of get some basic off-page SEO under 500 bucks a month, right? But it's really, I mean, when you get into those packages, they're not really designed to, for conversions. They're more designed to give you that SEO footprint that you need to start to build over time. So to answer your question, I mean, we can get started for under a grand and really just start to kind of do some testing more, more than anything else so we can get data for you. Um, also, I mean, you're just starting off your site. You're probably going to, as you convert more people, it's about, oh, someone looked at the hat. I want to make sure I put pixels on every single product page. So when I look at the hat, that when I leave, I can see the hat again, right? I can start seeing it. So all that kind of starts to kind of play into it. So yeah, I mean, we have packages for under a grand easily to kind of get some data proof points to figure out what's going to happen longer term. So, I mean, five grand, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, there's, I mean, Peggy and I have worked at previous places where we were handling budget 50, 60, $100,000 a month. But these are huge brands that got millions of dollars and they already kind of know what the data is telling them and they're following it. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to sit down and talk sometime, let me know. We can jump on a Zoom one on one and I could kind of walk you through some options and kind of just to kind cool. of figure out what makes the most sense. Yeah, yeah, that's super helpful. I'm definitely going to shoot you an email after the after the call. Yeah, and it's really progression forward. I'm a big believer of that too with any business, right? If this is the first time doing stuff like this, there's a trust factor and there's a like in the sense of what you're doing and that you feel confident and that's progression upward. I don't, I'm not a big believer, like put all your money right away. Like, be, like spend the money on the areas that you know is going to work best for you. And then you, every month or every three months, you know, you can figure out what that additional budget would look like. Cause you have to, you have, there is progression in this, but do it on your terms of what you feel comfortable with. Cause there are a lot of options. Uh, thank next. Thank you for that question. Um, Holly asked the question, I guess I'm just going to paraphrase if we can kind of get more in terms of what constitutes a lookalike audience. 
So look alike essentially is everybody has a Facebook profile and your profile in the Facebook of algorithms is tracked on what you like, your interest, the things, your A, all that. So your demographics, your interests, your behavior is tracked on what you do on social. Lookalike is if you have an email list of customers or clients and we use that as a custom audience, we are sending ads to those email, those people, if, they're, if they are on social because their email is associated to your social account, but then on top of that, the lookalike is if I, if these emails have other people in their world with similarities of interest or behaviors, um, those people would potentially then also be served an ad. And I go back to my, like me being a fitness instructor. If I'm a part of my gym's email and they do a lookalike, right? And I have a lot of people with similarities of the things I like okay, in the fitness industry, my friends could potentially get that gym um, campaign in their newsfeed as well, because they're seeing Peggy Olson and her people. Wow, she's got a lot of people that have the same profile as her, a lot of same similarities. So those are a good target for us to get in front of. That's what lookalike is. And also just to add to that, Holly, I think one of the things that people don't realize, and this is a uh especially with Facebook and Instagram and, you know, WhatsApp, they have all these different, you know, properties that they've owned. So what happens is that every single one of those properties that Facebook owns, everything that Peggy just described, it's like what's happening in Facebook, right? All the things that you're looking at, but Facebook basically has a revolving door too. If you guys see all these websites across the web that have sign in with Facebook, once you do that, you're basically telling Facebook what other sites you're on that have that login to go into you know, whatever, if it's, uh, I can sign into New York Times with my Facebook account, right? So they know that you read the New York Times, but they also know when you leave Facebook, you're going to some other destination. So Facebook knows where you're coming in from, where you're going. So not only does it look like have the attributes from within their ecosystem, but it also has the attributes from all the outside ecosystem that's out there. So they're basically looking to say, okay, we're, we're targeting Ivan, but we also want to go find other people like Ivan or like Peggy's example that do, what are, what, are, what are the things I look at? I read a lot of news articles. I, I like, you know, finance stuff. I like all these different things. So it really kind of gives, you know, especially Facebook because they're just so predominant in and outside of their ecosystem. So all that kind of comes into play, not just the geography of the demographics, but it just has so much more to it. I hope that answers the question, Holly. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? I know we got about three more minutes and uh, happy to answer any more questions. I know, like I said, we threw a lot at you all. Anyone else you can either just ask them directly or type in the chat. Was this helpful? Did you guys learn anything? Okay. <laughs> now you know what your options are, is what I say. There's, a, there's some cool stuff out there. There really is. There are some things that are, you know, are the opportunities out there for you guys is kind of endless. It's just, again, figuring out and working with us on like, what's the right fit? What's the right mix? you know, of campaigns that you can do to make it worth your while. And that's us, you know, you don't have to decide that yourself, we'll help you with that. But that comes with, you know, just like talking and talking to us and letting us help you, you know, figure out and what this is. It's like a pretty dynamic thing too, right? As you were yeah. saying, like it would, you constantly be tweaking, refining, yeah. saying like Always. this worked, this didn't work, let's change this, let's tweak that. Yeah, it's not, it's not set and go. It's, it's, we have a team of specialists that are optimizing, checking in. We do monthly calls, if not more, with a lot of our clients and strategize, you know, because there are things that have to change to make it better, but it's a team effort. Uh, but we're really involved with our clients that we work with on these campaigns because we want it to work for them. And so, yeah, that was my next question. Set and go. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't right. play that game. Go ahead, How Ken. much? Uh, sorry, no, I, I think Peggy touched on it, but that was kind of like the next question is like, because we are, would be tweaking it so much, like how much involvement, like, would I continue to have, like, or how would I need to have as we continue to like progress with, with the plan? Yeah, we're really transparent with the data. So you all get a dashboard that we will teach you on how to read it and understand what you're seeing as far as campaign performance in metrics. And then on top of that, we schedule out calls on overall performance of the campaigns. Again, optimization recommendations, 
you know, monthly changes, just things to keep those campaigns successfully running and to make it good, you know, make it work for you. And I'm a, I'm a big part of a lot of that, just so you know, um, on the target marketing end, we do calls every day with our clients and going through all that stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Well, everybody, I'll tell you what, I'll leave you all with this. So if anybody's interested, I mean, at the very least, this complimentary web audit, just shoot me an email. Like I said, with your domain, we'll run an audit. We'll send out, we'll send you the report. Uh, happy to walk you through the report. It's pretty straightforward once you see it, but happy to walk you through it. Also, if anybody wants a copy of the presentation, I'm happy to, you know, actually, Michael, I'll send it to you. So you can kind of yep. just send it out to the participants and then you guys can have it in your inbox. I know we pushed a lot of information towards you. So you can kind of go back at your leisure and take a look at it and kind of read a little bit more into it. There's a lot of stats in there and everything. Mike just put my email in the chat. So definitely uh, jot that down. Uh, it'll be in the deck as well. And um, yeah, happy to help answer any questions. And to Peggy's point, um, you know, we're, we've been doing this a long time. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, you know, if we can help, we're here to help. If you get a quote from someone else and you're kind of questioning it, hey, just shoot me an email. We're part of the member of the chamber here. I'm happy to tell you, you know, my thoughts on it. Uh, one way or another. I mean, it's uh, at the end of the day, it, you got to feel comfortable who you're working with. And if uh, if it's us, great. If it's not, that's okay too. But um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. And I just want to say thank you to Ivan and Peggy. I appreciate you both um, taking the time out of your schedules to present today. I you're also welcome. want to thank TD Bank again for sponsoring today. And I want to thank you all for being part of the, uh, the program as well. If the chamber has been uh, useful, if the Merrimack Valley Chamber has been uh, helpful to you, if you can leave us a Google review, you can leave us a Facebook review or, or some sort of social review. We definitely appreciate that always. And um, Ivan and Peggy have done a number of webinars also, so you can find those past ones on YouTube. They're very helpful on the Merrimack Valley Chamber's YouTube, so make sure to check those out also. But again, thank you to Ivan, thank you to Peggy for your time there. We appreciate it. Thank you to Parker with TD Bank, and um, we appreciate you all joining us. Hope you all can make the expo next Wednesday, April 6th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have two great programs during that day as well as the expo, so make sure to stop by. Make sure you tell your business associates as well. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you.